We talked a lot about that yesterday, and we're going to be con- con- continuing on with that because we want to make sure that, as I said at the opening, we want to set ourselves up for the best possible 2021 that we can have. And yesterday, we talked about writing a letter to your future self, writing your current self, rather, a what I called a later letter. And the later letter, the idea is to tell yourself 2020 was the best, excuse me, 2021. You're writing at it as if it's one year from now. And you say 2021 was the best year of my life because, and then you fill in the blanks. It gives you a vision that pulls you forward, that leads you in the direction you want to go. As we were talking yesterday, so often at the end of the year, we look back on everything we didn't do. We look back on everything we don't like about ourselves. We look at everything we don't want to see happen again, which is fine if we use that to make some changes. Instead, however, what if we jumped forward one year from now and looked back? I mentioned just a moment ago, and I doubt I can pull it up right now, but this morning when I opened Facebook, what I got served up to me was an image of Teddy Bear from a year ago. Nope, not going to see it. Anyway, it was Teddy from a year ago, and he was chewing on a ball, and he was smiling, et cetera, and he looked very, very happy. So imagine, though, that you're looking back on a Facebook memory for yourself, and it is December the 29th. 2021, and you're writing out a letter to yourself saying, 2021 was the best year of my life because this is so important. It begins things on a positive note. It gives you something to look forward to. And as I say, this then becomes your vision that draws you. And also, I want to press pause here real quick and say congratulations because a bunch of you wrote in the comments section that you've done this already. So I'd like to ask you, if you have not done this, are you going to do this? And if so, will you do it before the close of today? Write out simply, and I'm going to type it in the comments section myself, 2021 was the best year of my life because... There we go. And so what we want to do is write that out. And then that becomes your vision of what is pulling you forward. Date it one year from today and write it out. So tell me, are you going to do it? I hope you do. I know a lot of you already have. So once you've done this, and this is step number one, write out 2021 was the best year of my life because, and by the way, have I done this yet? Nope. I'm going to do it today. It's on my list of things to do today. 2021 was the best year of my life because Michelle Doherty says she's going to continue to add to my letter. Very good. Congratulations, Michelle. Michelle was one of the people who reached out to me and said that she had actually done hers already. That's great. Kathy says, I'm going to do this. I have a new planner that I will put this in. I will finish my letter today, says Heather Ellis. Very good. Congratulations, Heather. I really action, action, action. If this takes you more than 15 minutes, I'll be surprised. But if it totally changes your year and changes your perspective, it is worth it. Cynthia Barter says she's already done this. Good for you, Cynthia. So now let's talk about once you've written this letter, I want you to pick one thing. Now, I've kicked this around the block a few times before, but I want to make sure that you then pick one thing. 2021 was the best year of my life because, and then I want you to look at the things and go, if this one thing happens in my life, just this one thing, then I will consider myself having been successful. I was thinking this morning, and I use this analogy a lot because I still find it interesting that I was actually able to do this. Of all the things I've accomplished Believe it or not, this is probably the thing that I'm most proud of, and that is that 
all through school, when I was a little boy, I was the fat kid. I was the catcher on the baseball team simply because I was too fat to run. <laughs> and I was an easy target. And I got fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter until I was pushing 300 pounds when I was uh, 18 years old. And I lost 100 pounds. And I was thinking about that this morning, about how I did that. Well, I went to Weight Watchers. And the reason I like Weight Watchers, I've said this before, is that it addresses all of the things that we need, accountability, a certain program, et cetera. It's the same reason AA works and a lot of others, accountability, program, et cetera. So I followed this and I lost 100 pounds. And I was thinking about that today. If I had to lose 100 pounds today, man that would be a drag. That would be hard. I mean, I'm, I, even though I've done it before and I know I can do it, but the reason I think it would be difficult today is that I remember that time. I was thinking about it this morning and all I focused on was the weight loss. All I thought about was the weight loss. It was the one thing in my life. Before I got up the next day, I had my meals planned for the next day. If I was going to walk or exercise, I had that scheduled out. And that is all I thought about. If I was going to a party with my friends in high school, and this is back then, of course, people were drinking beer in high school. And instead of beer or even Coca-Cola or whatever, I would take my diet Shasta. So that's all I thought about. And because it was my one goal, because it was all that I thought about, because it was everything for me, I accomplished it. And the same is true for you. Think and Grow Rich, one of the greatest books ever, talks about, you know, make a list of what it is that you want and then pick one thing, just one thing. And that's the challenge. I know in my business, my daughter tells me this all the time, that I have this idea of like, well, I see this way I can help people and this way I can bring value to people's lives. And so I'm always constantly running in a lot of directions and she has to basically nail my foot to the floor sometimes to get me to finish things. We're creating a new video today for my speaking clients and I've been working on what it is I want to say and I find that I'll get almost done with it and then I'll go work on something else. So we all have this propensity, I'm telling you, that if you struggle with similar challenges, that you're normal. You're normal. There's nothing wrong with you. You're normal. So my question to you is, now that you've written out this letter, 2021 was the best year of my life because I want you to go in and find one because, one thing, one, uno, and I want you to let everything else go. I want you to write in this letter. My relationships continued to improve. Or I found somebody and fell in love, if that's your biggest thing. Or I made the most money I've ever made in my life. I lost 20 pounds. Or I was able to do 40 push-ups without stopping. Whatever it is. Look at all of the things that you considered to make 2021 a great year. If you're looking back on it, you say, if this happens, if this happens, I'd like this happens. And I want you to release all of it to God, to the universe, to your higher power, to whatever you feel is going to take care of it. And I want you to pick one thing. One and only one thing. And I want you to circle it. One thing that you would say to yourself, you know, if this and only this happened, I would consider 2021 to be a great year. If this and only this happened, I would consider 2021 to be a great year. Circle it and then Begin to create a plan to make it happen. <sighs> One of the things I've noticed being in unity, the faith, unity, and being a unity minister, which unity is new thought Christianity. It's literally called new thought because it's all about thinking. It's about thought. You will often find 
Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill in most Unity bookstores. Even though most people would consider it a business book, you will find Think and Grow Rich. Now, what I've discovered is that in Unity, people love to get together for vision board parties. We used to do that. Everybody go out and buy a, a uh, two by three or one by two uh, cork board. Then people would bring in magazines back then. And everybody would cut them up and put in, oh, I want this Tesla or this Ferrari, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which is all great. And that's all part of what Think and Grow Rich teaches. Okay, that's step one. Have some dreams, have some goals, have some ideas of where you want to go. Step two is begin to make a plan immediately and act on that plan whether you think you're ready or not. Let me say that again. To begin to act on that plan, whether you think you are ready or not. Five or six years ago, I threw out to whoever I was married to at the time, <laughs> the idea of having a television show based on the 21-day complaint-free challenge. And the person I was married to said, nah, it doesn't sound like a really good idea. I don't think so. And then later on, I was talking to someone else about it who's really into reality TV. And she said, I think it's a fantastic idea. Now, all of a sudden, I had the idea. I had had the idea actually for years. What I had never done was begin to take action on it. How would I even begin to take action on writing, on doing a TV show? You know how? You just do. You just do. What most people think is that, I'm going to wait for some producer to come in and walk into the dry cleaners where I'm working and saying, do you have any good TV show ideas? And then I'll be discovered and I'll become. That's right. The two words everybody wants, rich and famous. <sighs> it's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. You choose one thing and you begin to work on it even when you have no idea how to do it. So what did I do? Okay, I talked to everybody I know who watches reality TV shows and I asked them to describe to me their favorite show and what it is they like about the shows. And then I sat down because I'm not a reality TV show watcher. I haven't watched really in since complete makeover home edition, total makeover home edition. I then sat down and I began to watch reality shows and I began to map out what it was that I thought. And the more, and here's what I discovered. Every time I would think I was getting close, it was like a Rubik's cube. I would move something on one side and the other side would begin to move away. But you know what? I continue to work on it. I continue to work on it. I continue to work on it. Do I think I know what I'm doing? Nope. But then again, as Edwin Gaines put it so well, darling, you didn't know how to do puberty when you started, but you figured it out. The same is true for whatever is important to you. So here's what I want to invite you to do. If you haven't yet, write that letter. 2021 was the best year of my life because this doesn't have to be five pages. It can be a half a page or a page. Just cover the why. Then choose one thing. Uno. Uh, one. Ein and begin to work on that one thing, doing something every day to take you in the direction of it. Now, here's what's going to knock you for a loop. You're going to pick the biggest thing, the most successful thing, et cetera, and you're going to begin to work on it. You're going to feel totally inadequate. You're going to feel like it's never going to happen. And then it's like adding sand through a sand glass. It's just an hourglass. It's going to go through and through and through. And soon all of your little efforts are this big pile to where it has momentum and you cannot help but have what it is or become or achieve what it is you want. And it's going to happen faster than you can imagine. If I was to ask you to pick that one thing and say, this is the one thing that I'm going to do and I'm going to do it uh, this year, you would go, oh my gosh, this is going to take me the whole year plus maybe half of next year. If you get started, you probably finish it before the end of the first quarter. I'm just telling you, I've done this many times myself because the universe begins to work with you. I forget who said it. I think it was W. Somerset Mom who said that life moves aside for the man who knows whither he is going. 
if you know man or woman where you're going, life just begins to open up. So you got to pick one thing. And all the other things will still happen. Trust me. Just focus on this one thing. Ashley Day says, I did this as well. Very inspiring. Glad to hear it. Hey, Natasha, glad to have you with us. Post any questions or comments you have on the one thing or the letter, and we will conclude this morning by reading your questions and comments. Thank you all so much for joining me. Missing Ed this morning. And Mike, are you guys with me? Willow says, I envisioned living in a Virginia horse farm when I was six. Took until I was 36. Wow. But you know what? You got there. And when you're six, 36 seems like, my God, I'll be an old lady. <laughs> and now that's half my life practically. So it's awesome. Annie Price says, good morning. Good to see you. And as always, Cynthia Barcher says, I chose being consistent at a fitness routine. That is awesome. I will tell you now one final thing before I let you go. Once you pick one thing and begin to work on it, that will be the thing the ego tries to scuttle. That will be the thing your ego tries to stop you. So what your consistency does is it's not really about if I do a push-up today, two push-ups tomorrow, three the day after, four the day after, which is a great way to learn to do 40 push-ups or you know, a week, whatever, do one a week, one a day for a week. Anyway, if you're doing that, your ego is going to begin to come up with reasons and to attack and say you should have picked something else. Too late. Too late. Because the real value in all of this is that consistency that Cynthia is talking about. And it's getting your ego to shut up, to let you know that your ego can no longer tell you what to do. That rude roommate that lives in your head, you're done with them. You're far too strong. All right? So everybody, if you haven't done these things, do them today. You're going to find it's going to make a huge, huge, huge difference in your life going into 2021. Today is part two of a five-part series I'm going to be doing on how to have a great 2021. So be sure and join me for all of them. And most importantly, click share right now. Click share, if you would. Share this message with other people so that we can let them know how to have a great 2021 as well. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye -bye. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating. Complain free world no more.